All right, so far we've talked about how you use phosphocreatine and how you recover it, but, and that you need oxygen to recover phosphocreatine. But what about exercise? Can you recover phosphocreatine in the muscle during exercise? The short answer is yes. The longer answer is yes, but it depends on the exercise intensity that you're doing. So here's a study illustrated by Jones in 2010. They had people do uh, different intensities of exercise above and below something called the critical power. This critical power is, is the maximum intensity at which you can obtain steady state conditions in the muscle or in your body. All right, so it's a maximum intensity where you'll hit a steady state heart rate, steady state VO2. It's the maximum intensity where you'll have a steady pH, which we'll see in a second. Uh, it, where it happens in relation to VO2 max varies from person to person, but it, it's usually in an untrained individual somewhere around 50% of their VO2 max. Uh, it can go up as high as 80 or 90% of VO2 max in very trained individuals, which means that they can sustain and achieve steady state at very high intensities of exercise. All right, so what is critical power, which we'll learn a lot more about in a couple of days, what does it have to do with phosphocreatine? So in this study, Jones had people do different exercises and in an MRI and measured phosphocreatine levels as a percent of their baseline. And they also measured the pH and levels of inorganic phosphate. We're gonna focus primarily on the phosphocreatine levels today. So the first intensity of exercise happened at 5% below their critical power. And so if this was like a running speed, let's say that your, your maximum speed that you could run is 10 miles per hour, like that's where you hit your VO2 max. Uh, we're talking about increasing this just a little bit. Not We're not talking a huge deal above or below critical power. So instead of VO2 max, 5% above critical power. And when they're just or sorry, below critical power. Man, I'm botching this, sorry. So 5% below critical power when they're exercising, what happens to phosphocreatine levels? Well, you can see from baseline, they start at baseline, they start at 100% and then they gradually go down and hit a steady state somewhere around 80% of their critical, uh, of their phosphocreatine levels. So they've only used about 20% at the start of exercise and then they stabilize towards the end. So why are you using it at the start? At the start of exercise, your aerobic systems are not yet running at the level that you need, and it takes a while to get them going. So there's something called your oxygen deficit, where when you start to exercise, you are forced to use anaerobic systems to produce the ATP that you need before or until the aerobic systems is up and running and, and can take over. So that's why we see initial decrease. But what you should note is when you're exercising just below critical power, Phosphocreatine levels plateau, okay? Now, the next intensity they did was just above critical power. So we're, we're looking at a 10% difference in intensity. This isn't a huge difference. This is very subtle. And if you don't know what your critical power is, you might not know that you're above or below it. This is really subtle difference. But so just exercising barely faster, the phosphocreatine levels go down and down and keep going down until they were forced to stop. They failed, they couldn't keep going. In the case of the first condition with the black dots, they this, the researchers stopped them, said, I don't wanna be here watching you do this all day, so go ahead and stop. Uh, they could have gone for a really long time, but in the case of 5% above, their endurance was really low. And part of that is because they're depleting their phosphocreatine levels. Now, at the same time, you see pH levels stabilize and inorganic phosphate levels stabilize while pH drops and inorganic phosphate increases if you're above critical power. So these things are major signals for peripheral fatigue. And so in addition to depleting your phosphocreatine levels, you're also having large signals for peripheral fatigue and inefficiency in the muscle, which we'll talk about. So exercising above critical power, you're going to use your, you can't get a steady state of phosphocreatine. You're going to deplete that phosphocreatine very quickly. But what about recovery? So in this study, they had people exercise again in an MRI and they measured the phosphocreatine levels. Here's baseline. And then they had them do exercise until exhaustion on three different days. And they reached the same levels of phosphocreatine at exhaustion. And then they gave them three different ways to recover. Now the recovery is the, the emphasis here. The first way that they were allowed to recover from the exercise is just lay there. 
And so they got to just lay down and the recovery happened rather quickly and they hit their, their baseline levels or close to baseline within about six minutes or so. Now, another way that they got to recover, which doesn't sound a lot like a recovery to me, is exercising at a power slightly greater than critical power. So at a high intensity, and if they're doing that, phosphocreatine levels did not recover and they failed really quickly. They couldn't do their cool down, which was a very intense cool down, but they couldn't do it and phosphocreatine levels did not recover at all. Now, they had them go just a little bit lower on their exercise recovery this time, so slightly below critical power. And in this case, they gradually recovered phosphocreatine levels, but not up to, not at the same speed as if they were resting. So if you're exercising below critical power, you have some extra ability to dedicate ATP produced by the mitochondria to the recovery of phosphocreatine. If you're exercising at a higher intensity than that, it seems that all the ATP that you're producing is preferentially directed towards uh, performing the exercise itself, not the recovery of phosphocreatine. There is some nuances in here and there and uh, that will influence that, but that's the general idea. So can you recover phosphocreatine during exercise? Yes, but it has to be below a certain intensity. And the closer to rest you are, the faster the recovery. So if you wanna really mess up your competitor, um, let, let's say that you're a football player and in between uh, snaps, like in between plays, you wanna prevent them from resynthesizing or recuperating their phosphocreatine levels, try and keep them moving as fast as possible so that their recovery will be slowed.